Hello and welcome to Scissors Snack Sandwich. Today I'm going to take a quick look at Bungie. Now Bungie is a cross-chain bridging aggregator. So basically it looks at all of the bridges for you and chooses the one or it lets you choose which one you want to do based on some key like metric that you've decided. You'll understand what I mean when I go into the UI and explain it to you. But before I want to go into the UI, I'll explain to you that it runs on this tech called the socket. So socket is like socket is like the background case, like what's in the background. It's like the engine to Bungie. So Bungie is just trying to set up to kind of show people what does this socket do. Now this socket has two layers. It has the liquidity layer and the data layer. Now the liquidity layer is basically the movement of the, uh, the tokens from different places to different places. So kind of DEX aggregation and then different kinds of bridges. And you can see the bridges that are currently uh, currently supported, but on here, but I think they're, they're, there's obviously going to be more and more as they come out. Now currently it is already integrated with uh, these like Bungie, like I'm going to show you today, Zapper, Zybran, Ibron Wallet, Atlantis, Loans, DeFi, T2. And so these apps have used Socket in the background to do the same thing kind of that Bungie's doing, right? So that's the liquidity layer, kind of transferring tokens from one place to another and also like, you know, doing some swaps and so forth. Now, uh, the data layer is kind of like apps wanting to talk to each other. So maybe I have an app on two chains and I want them to interact with each other and it's kind of just sending data from one chain to another chain. Okay, so that's basically the main idea. So if you want to read more, you can come and check these docs. And they also have a nice docs here. I'll put links to these in the description. And then they also do have some Medium articles for a little bit lighter reading and so forth. So you can check out these different links in uh, the description of this video. Now, this is not the first uh, bridge aggregator that I covered. I did cover one in the past called XY Finance, but it's a little bit different than XY Finance. XY Finance has its own liquidity and its own fees and stuff like that. Bungie is free to use in a sense. Like Bungie does not charge any fees on top of the fees that you're already going to get hit with. So if you see here, it says Bungie does not charge fees. You will pay gas because that's what you know blockchains are. You have to pay gas. You pay swap fees if your transaction is routed through a like a one inch or Uniswap or Paraswap or something. And then you'll also have to pay bridge bridge fees because the bridges usually have some sort of fee as well in order to sustain them and to pay liquidity providers. So there are two things that I'm going to show you today. Uh, the first one is bridging. So the first thing, I, as you can see, I'm currently uh, logged into Arbitron or sorry, Optimism. And today I'm going to transfer some tokens from Optimism to uh, Arbitron just for the hell of it. So as you can see, you can choose the input and the output. So I could choose Ethereum here and I could then bridge, let's say 0.2 Ethereum and receive USDC on the other side. So as you can see, what it does is it kind of gives me a few choices, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to take my Ethereum, swap it for USDC, and then send USDC across the across bridge, right? Now this is based on the settings of highest return. I decide I want the most USDC possible. And if we check out the numbers, they are slightly lower if it goes through the hop or the seller bridge, right? Now, if I switch to fastest, it's using this this estimated time to to decide the the, the top choice for me, which is now is hop the hop bridge, right? And then we also have highest uh, sorry lowest gas. Now, lowest gas is not completely important, but in this case, it, it's because I, I'm, I'm changing tokens, it's asking me to, to swap, right? But if I change it to Ethereum, then some of the bridges don't ask for swaps and some of them might, right? Uh, in this case, it, all of them don't. But there is the possibility that, you know, this one of these bridges might require WETH, so it might swap and then go through. And then the gas would be... Uh, consideration and also if you're going from ethereum you might want to consider gas as well because if it swaps on ethereum first and then sends across the bridge it's going to significantly charge you more so you don't have to use these filters what i would use is just kind of look at 
these two metrics as a as the, the decision and then the, obviously the the total output that you're going to get so let's do a quick little ethereum swap of 0 0.1 i don't want to send too much because i'm more dominantly on optimism than arbitrum right now so i'm going to use this the seller bridge is going to give me i don't care about lowest gas let's go with highest return and proceed now it loads up and then i press the bridge and it's going to give me a transaction asking me to sign and pay a little bit of gas. Now I've already uh, approved spending of uh, my tokens. So you will probably have to do that first. And then I will confirm to send this Ethereum over to Arbitron. And then I'll wait. So as you can see, I've got my confirmation on Optimism and then the bridging's in the progress. So it's basically waiting for the transaction on uh, on the Arbitrum side. And this is actually quite good. It, it works quite well and I've found it to be quite uh, accurate. Like I've waited sometimes about 20 minutes or something like that. And this UI is like, oh, when it tells me I'm done, I'm done, which is great because there are some bridges that don't really do this, do this very well and don't really show you what, uh, when you have the tokens and so forth. So I'm going to just wait now and then I'll cut this out of the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so as you can see, it's finished. Um, took a little bit while. Let's, let's check out how long it actually took. Um, this is my uh, transaction that I used to send it on Optimism. It took me about 12 minutes. So if you are doing a bridge, you should be prepared to wait a little bit for some of these bridges. Some of the bridges are slower and faster than others. So you just take, keep, keep, keep that in mind and you can do other things while you're waiting. You can even close this down and come back and it will still show up and so forth. So you don't need to worry too much. So that pretty much covers that. Uh, the bridging, the bridging should be done. Now I'm going to do a quick refresh. Oh yeah. Okay. So it does show it up here already. So it, the, the tokens are across the bridge already, which is great, but there is this other thing here that's called a refuel, which is quite important too. Now what this is, is there's a lot of times when you send a, some tokens from one bridge to another, like let's say I, instead I had decided to send uh, some, uh, some from optimism to phantom and I wanted to send some Ethereum across and I wanted to, to use Ethereum in some bridge or in some, some place on phantom, something like this, right? Then it would do its normal, like, oh, it would check and say, oh, what, which bridges can we use to, to send this across to Phantom, blah, 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 blah. And then I would send it, right? But I don't, if I don't have any gas on Phantom, then I will end up with Ethereum on Phantom and I can't spend it. Like when I sent Ethereum from Optimism to Arbitrum, they both use Ethereum as gas. So there's no problem there. But in the case where I'm sending across like tokens to the other side, to a bridge that doesn't use that token as gas. Or let's say I was doing a swap and I was like, oh, I, I want some USDC on, on that other chain. And if I don't have gas money on that other chain, then I won't be able to use those tokens. So they have this thing called refuel where you can send some tokens to another chain and, and receive gas. So like, if you take a look at this, so let's say I wanted to send 0 0.4, it's going to say, Hey, you gotta, you gotta send less, right? So now if I put 0 0.05, it's going to give me phantom on the other chain that I can use to pay for gas. And the actual value of the two tokens is identical. So it's, if I send, let's say, I don't know, let's say this was $10, right? $10 worth of Ethereum, I would receive exactly $10 worth of Phantom on the other chain. So this, that's why they put a limit. So you can't just like ARB things with this. You can't send like thousands of dollars across chains and ARB pools with it, but you can definitely make sure you get enough gas to do like a couple transactions, maybe four or five or six transactions on that other chain. And then we do have a history of like all the transactions that you've done in the past on different chains and so forth. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I hope this is useful. I would consider definitely using this. And even if you just used it to just check like, oh, what, what could I use to send from here to, to here? Let's say I wanted to send a Polygon, um, Ethereum, and I wanted to, to get Comp. Let's just see what this produces if I put 0 0.1. 
See, now this is the problem that I'm finding a lot in here. If I'm not sending standard tokens like Ethereum or, or USDC, let's say I wanted to use USDT and I wanted to send it to Polygon, I wanted to receive USDC, it does work. So like there, you know, the blue chip tokens or the very, very popular tokens are being supported, but I would like to see this like have a larger list of tokens that it actually supports. Like if I put CRV here, what happens? The bridge doesn't look. So the problem is, in my opinion, is that they swap before the bridge and they don't do swaps after the bridge, which this kind of needs. But if I put CRV here, let's say I just put some token at the top here, like uh, perp, and I want to receive USDC on Polygon, you see, this works because it, it's it's doing the swap before the bridge. But what I would like to see is some swaps after the bridge. Okay. And then you could do a lot more with this and you could receive tokens on other chains that are of more use to you in that sense. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this. I uh, hope this has been useful. I would definitely think you should check it out and, and try to use it sometimes if you are doing a lot of bridging like I do. Um, that's pretty much it for now. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.